Okay, I'm going to step into the instrument uh, inputs now and talk about what we're, I'm doing with the instrument inputs. In general, as I'm thinking about the instruments, you always got to keep in mind what your frequency space is. And this is just kind of a general mixing technique. And it's something that, that you ought to learn and, and get familiar with and, and, and learn how to think about that. So each instrument is going to have a different place where it sits in the mix. And so, you know, you've got a bass guitar that's going to sit low in the mix, and you might have a flute that's going to sit kind of in the middle. You know, surprisingly, we think about the flute being high, but it kind of sits in the middle. And we might have a guitar that it could really sit in the middle, or it could sit up in pretty high frequencies. And so we got to make space for all of those different instruments. And so that's fundamentally what you have to think about. What frequency, what's the fundamental frequency of that instrument? Where is it going to fill out the mix? Make sure that it's not fighting with something else in the mix and, and over top of it so you kind of make space for everything. So that's one of the fundamental things you're doing. Um, I always just constantly think about sweeping across that stage. So I'm looking ahead, looking up and saying, okay, can I hear every instrument's up there. Can I hear the electric, the acoustic, the bass, the keyboard, or the piano? Can I hear all those instruments? Is something out of whack in the mix, something buried or lost in the mix? And so constantly going back and forth and making sure you can hear everything there and make sure it's in the right proportion for that song. So you got to think musically about that song as well. Um, in general, in the instrument mixes, I'm always thinking about those low mids and making room for my vocals because that's where your fundamentals of your vocals sits and that 200 range in there and their first harmonic is up around 400 or something like that and so that first harmonic a lot of times um, gets gets really muddy in there and so you know I'm doing a lot of cutting and, and you'll see that on some of these instruments that I do a lot of cutting in that four or five hundred hertz range to kind of make room for that first harmonic on the vocals uh, so that they they have a place so that they come out they can be heard in the mix and they're not fighting with some of your instruments and everything down there so you got to watch those low mids and that you know again that that 200 to 500 range in there so let's go through each one of these and, and talk about what I do. Um, so I'll start with the bass and look at the bass channel first because that's kind of your foundation. And the bass, a lot of times, I'm not doing a lot of riding on that bass. That kind of be becomes my foundation of my sound uh, of the mix. And if the gain is set right, it just kind of sits there with the drums and that becomes your foundation that you, that you build everything on. So, you know, that, that sort of sets the stage, if you will, for your mix. Um, EQ on the bass, it depends on the bass uh, that I generally don't do a whole lot. I'll put a, a high pass filter in there because they don't play below uh, 30 hertz or something like that and we don't want any of that information in the mix that just kind of muddies up stuff in there. So I'll put a little bit of a high pass filter on that. Um, I will push the high mids and again this depends on the tone that you get from some of the bass players. Some bass players like a really big fat muddy bass. And then I'll have to push those high mids to kind of get some definition and get some attack on the notes. Um, I'll sometimes cut a little bit of the low mids in there. you got to be careful doing that because that's kind of the fundamental of that bass in there, in, in there around 80 to 110 hertz or something like that. That's where you see a lot of those bass fundamentals. So you don't want to cut that fundamental. You're losing that instrument. Um, one other thing that I'll do is... Um, uh, make a real narrow cut right at the fundamental of the kick drum and what that does is allow room in my mix for that kick drum to come through so if the bass and the kick hit at the same time you don't lose that kick that I can still hear that kick and that beat and it doesn't kind of get get dropped off or washed out by that bass. Um, another technique that a lot of people use are side, side chaining compressors and things like that. Um, that's a little bit tricky to do with these with these QL consoles. Um, but just putting a real small cut in there kind of leaves a little bit of room, so I'll do that. And that's really about all the processing in there. A little bit of compression on that uh, because every string hit is a... Uh, is a little bit different and so I'll be looking at, at a compression you know maybe two to three dBs of compression as they're playing so I don't want to over squash the thing but I just want enough there just to kind of keep it tight level it out a little bit so that they're not I'm not chasing dynamics with it all the time now one other trick that I like to do with the with these basses and again with a lot, some of our bass players like a really muddy tone or you get a lot of bass players that haven't changed their strings for two years and it just makes that bass really sloshy and 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 soupy and doesn't have a lot of definition to it and so what I do is double patch that bass uh, channel and bring that into a second channel and what I'm going to do on this is add a uh, add a, a amp simulator to it. 
So I'm taking this, putting this as an insert, so I'm taking this base wet, I call it, and putting it into an amp simulator and just putting a whole bunch of overdrive on it, a drive. And if you listen to it, it just sounds like you've kind of maxed the thing out on the channel and it's clipping or, you know, just give, just kind of gives you some stuff like that, just some really weird sounds. But if you mix that in, just layer that in a little bit with the bass, that just gives you a lot of definition. So it takes that mushy, muddy thing that just kind of is going woof, 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 and it adds some definition to it so you can start to hear definition between the notes of boom, 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 boom. So so I'll do that and just play with that a little bit. So again, that's just a, an amp simulator with a lot of drive on it uh, that we've got hooked in there. And all I want is the high frequency out of that. So it's really weird to see a bass channel with a high pass filter at like 600. So I've taken that high pass filter up as high as it can go because all I want is those high frequencies that are going out of that bass channel into that amp simulator and I've put those in the order so if you look at the order of what happens so the signal comes in through the gain through the high pass filter through the EQ then it goes out to the amp simulator so I'm not sending any low frequencies to that amp simulator the only thing I'm sending is the high frequencies to that amp simulator so it gives me that definition that that shimmery stuff if you will on top and it, you know that can have let you bring that bass out without adding a whole lot of energy to it. And that helps downstairs for front of house a lot too. Uh, because if you're having trouble getting definition on the bass and you keep pushing and keep pushing, the next thing you know the room is just kind of of just thumping in there and the cameras in the back wall are wiggling, but it's because you 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 can't get that definition without getting too much energy in there. So adding that bass sweat channel will allow you to get some definition and be able to hear the notes, hear the tone. Um, without putting overdriving the energy in there. So, so that's some processing I do on the bass in there. So that's kind of the foundation for that. Um, keyboards, let's go to the keyboards next. I usually don't do an awful lot of processing on these. Um, the, the, the keyboard sounds are something that are developed from Mainstage, a very clean sound. It's a, it's a software product. And so I don't do a lot, um, depending on what signals, and you can see the, the mix that I had this past week, I did actually cut some of those low mids out of there again. This is where those vocals are centered that at about 400 or something like that, and cut those low mids out. So I was, the, the, the keys were just kind of overriding the, the low mids there, so I cut some of that out. And I was looking for a little bit more on, on the one song, I was looking for a little bit more definition, so I kind of pushed some of the high frequencies there to give me some, some high frequency definition. But not a lot of processing I do to that. No filters on that because you can get some pretty low frequency sounds from those keyboards, so I don't want to get rid of those very often. Um, right now we're running the, a piano, so when we have a Nord, and it's actually through my Key 2 channel this time, and again, that is a very, very clean piano, and so there's no processing on that whatsoever, uh, so it just comes through, it's a really, really nice signal. Now, occasionally I will, we've got some, some piano players that love the left hand, and when you've got a bass player, and they're down there hammering chords right on top of that bass, and so sometimes I will cut a lot of the low frequencies out of there if I've got a keyboard player that can't stay off the left hand. Uh, but our good keyboard players that know where they're good, you know, they're working themselves into the mix too. They're thinking about their frequency space. You're not going to have to do much processing on any of those folks. So, so there's not much processing on those on those keyboards. They come through pretty pretty good there and mix them up. So again, that that pad keys, you know, that's kind of your of your soup, the glue that's kind of in the background that kind of holds the mix together. Uh, that piano sound is the is the stuff on top. It's the color. It's giving me some rhythmic things and and hearing pitch and stuff like that off of that. Um, let's go to guitars next. Let's talk about the, the acoustic guitar. And uh, this is something that I'll change frequency, change EQ depending on what my band is. So if I've got an electric guitar uh, that's playing typical worship electric guitar. Um, I don't want a lot of low frequencies down in there. And so you can see in this particular mix, I had an electric guitar, so I took a lot of the low frequencies out. And when you listen to that guitar, the guitar players are going to say, that thing sounds terrible, and it does not sound very good, but when you put it in the mix, now it has a space in the higher frequencies up above the vocals where you can hear the string pluck, you can hear those chords, you can hear that tonality, and it really adds a lot of that shimmer to the mix and some of that high frequency definition. So, so I'll, I'll often cut some of those low frequencies out of there. Pretty typically, if I do, don't have an electric, 
I'll leave some of those low frequencies in down there just to kind of give me a little bit more beef in the mix so I can make a bigger mix and it makes it sound bigger if I take some of those low frequencies off that car, off of that guitar. But even if I do that, I'll still often put a cut in the in the low mids there somewhere around the the 400 something like that uh, to to be able to make room for those vocals in there. So that's almost a given. I almost always do that. I'll throw those those freak the, uh, a cut in there about 400 or something like that to get rid of that um, high pass filter typically you don't go at that high again I was trying to get rid of the low frequencies because of, of fighting with an electric that I had that they were playing a lot of really low mushy frequencies so I was trying to clean up the mix but typically you want to set that high pass filter at about 50 hertz something like that that's what the lowest uh, note that an acoustic guitar can play and that'll just take out all the low stuff that you don't need down there now electric guitars really depends on what's going on. Again, this this electric guitar player I had in this last mix, they were playing a, a, a just a real mushy kind of a big fat, a lot of low frequency sounds in there. And what I was trying to do was just clean that up. So I was taking a lot of those lows out and pushing some highs, trying to give me a little bit more definition, um, a little bit cleaner sound to make a, a cleaner mix on top. Um, but it, you know, if you've got guitar players that are really focusing on their tone, um, they're they're going to lay that in. You're not going to want to do much processing because they've they've really worked on that tone. Again, I find often even if I do have a good tone, I'll still depend on where the vocals are sitting. I'll still put that low mid cut in there around 400 or something like that, um, just to kind of clean up and make room for the. Uh, uh, for those for the vocals in there so and those are the fundamental instruments we have again sometimes we have a violin so, or a flute or something like that and just depend on the frequency of that instrument I'll try to make that the EQ sound as natural as possible so that it sounds like what the instrument is in fact I'll walk up onto the stage and put my ear right beside that acoustic instrument and get that sound in my ear before I come back up here and put headphones on and say okay how do I make that you know what do I need to do to make that sound like that instrument should sound and allow it to sit in its space in there so so that's that um, let me talk quickly about the effects I do have some instrument effects up here so I've got one effects processor and so if I open up that sends on fader you'll see in, in my particular mix I had a lot of the piano in there and I had a fair bit of acoustic in that and a little bit of bass so not very much bass in there because that'll kind of get it mushy and washy if you if you have too much but and this is more effects than I would typically use at front of house Again, uh, I talked about this in the introduction video, you have to create the ambiance and environment. And if you've got a lot of effects on vocals, you're, you're using some nice halls and plates and different verbs and stuff like that, and those sound washy, and then you've got these really dry, straight instrument sounds coming through, it just kind of sounds disconnected. So you want your mix to kind of blend together. So you want your, your vocals and your instruments to all be on the same page. And so I'll use a little bit more effects up here. So this is my instrument effects bus, and then I'll ride those instrument effects in. So I'll use a lot on, a, like if I have a flute or violin, I usually use a lot of effects on that. Again, a fair bit on my piano, just to kind of make it sound like it's not just that dry instrument hitting you in the eardrum, but it's you're hearing the 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 ambiance of the room, so you're hearing some reflections off the side of the room. So it's just a um, just a hall reverb, a simple hall reverb, uh, nothing real fancy set up on that. And again, you know, you, you adjust how much of these instruments go in there, and then in your mix, then you can just ride that instrument effect up to get as much as you need to make it sound. Again, making it sound like it's in a room and not just a, a really dry mix. So that's what you're trying to go for there. So that's instruments. Uh, general discussion of what's going on there.